now. <laughs> so we'll let you let the com <laughs> You're gonna say squash again? I guess we'll wait for the dog to stop drinking water. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, it, it is. All right, folks. Welcome back to Heavenly Acres Farm. I'm Nicole. And I'm Jose. And we are actually inside today. We don't usually film in the house, but it's almost noon and it's really hot. Plus our video today is actually going to be about seed saving. So we kind of need to be inside because there's a lot that we have going on inside that we want to show you guys. Yeah, we got a good recommendation from one of our friends, Whitney. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which we appreciate. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. It was a good idea. Yeah, Whitney messaged me on Instagram and she actually asked if we have a video on seed saving yet um, because her and her fiance are interested and excited to start saving seeds, but they're not really exactly sure yeah. like what that process looks like. Good looking out. Yes. So <laughs> let's get this started. Okay, so what kind of seeds are we going to talk about today? I know we probably should talk about like the easiest to do. Yes and then kind of in the medium and what really is, you know, what seeds are hard to harvest. And I apologize if the camera is shaking. We're moving around a lot and the dogs just bumped into the table. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like Jose said, I think the easiest way to approach it is what seeds are really simple to save. And then we'll talk about some of the ones that are a little more complex and not necessarily complex because they're hard to save those seeds, but more so because if you're growing in a smaller space, if you have limited space, you don't really have a lot of time to leave those plants in, to dedicate that space to just waiting around for the seed pods to develop and then dry. Yeah. It really takes up a lot of space and takes up a lot of time in your garden when you could be growing other food. So some things are just a little more inconvenient is what I would say. And it's not very pleasing to you. Yeah, sometimes yeah. they'll flower, but then once they start drying out, it's kind of ugly. You gotta be a little bit patient. It does take a lot of time like Nicole yeah. says. Unless you, you're a wild gardener and you like having the garden look wild and crazy, we're a bit more on the organized gardening side. We like things to be really pleasing to the eye aesthetically. We like things to look really beautiful. Um, so Jose has a bit more trouble with this than I do. When things start to get a little wild, he's like, I'm just going to rip it all out. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> no, it's there. okay. Like, let it go. I guess we'll start with one of the absolute easiest that a lot of people grow. Even as a new gardener, a lot of people grow peppers. Mm -hmm. So peppers are incredibly easy to save seeds. Um, my biggest thing, the way I save them, is as I'm preparing peppers for lunch, dinner, I just cut around the top portion of the pepper, leaving that like V shape, the cone shape where all the seeds are, I set that aside on a paper plate that I label with the type of pepper and I let it be until I'm ready to pull all those seeds off until I have time. So I'm going to get our little paper plate arrangement. Yeah, I, you'll put, see that. I put a picture of it on Instagram the other day. Um, those paper plates, I've been setting them in my office. They used to be on the dining room table and also on like the bar behind us. And there were a lot of them. So I started moving them into my office where I have a bit more room and the plates can sit kind of in a, a slightly sunny area to help dry them out. We are in Florida, so there's a lot of humidity, not necessarily in our home, but that room of the house does stay a little warmer. So I thought it might dry them out a little quicker. Let me grab those. And as she's talking, I'm kind of showing some of the plates she has out here. I just showed you the Chinese five color. Yeah. And we had like an abundance of those. So some of those we just put on the plate, let, let those dry. Right, so as you can see, this has pepper remnants all over it. So actually what I did the other day is I put my gloves on. When you're using hot peppers, oh Lord, let me tell you. I used to take seeds off of peppers with bare hands. <laughs> even, even poblanos, right? Which are not very spicy. My fingers, my hands were on fire for like two days. I could not get them. And the more you wash your hands, the more raw your skin becomes. So the worse it burns. It was so bad. Yeah, it's kind of funny, actually. I, I find things like this funny. I know it's kind of weird, but we'd be on the opposite side of the house and then out here, ah, I touched my eye again. And yeah, so I have the worst vision. So I wear contacts <laughs> and glasses and I have to take my contacts out at night. 
and I would forget. So I would go to take my contact out. My eyes would be burning so badly. So I would try and like take my contacts out with my knuckle. I mean, just wear gloves. So Jose was super sweet, went to the store, got me some gloves. Um, so I just would leave. I didn't have time when we first harvested these peppers to get them all cut up and ready to go. So we just threw them on the plate with the label and you can see Chinese five color pepper. And then when I had time, I went through and I ripped the peppers open and I saved the seeds. Now, this is not my preferred method. I prefer to cut the pepper open and at least get some air in there first um, because some of these m did mold and that'll happen. If you don't get them open quick enough, they will mold um, and then you don't really wanna save those seeds. So I only really tried to take out the good seeds um, and save those and left the other ones. These will all go in the compost pile. So those are the Chinese five color. This is our bell pepper plate. You can see we have a ton of bell pepper seeds and this is not all the seeds we have. I'm gonna show you packets that we already have, um, but you can see there's an abundance here. So not only is this gonna be sustainable for Jose and I for our gardens here and for starting our farm in Tennessee, but we're able to then gift seeds, sell seeds. We're able to share that wealth because you know these seeds won't save for like forever. We can only grow so many peppers each season. Um, so we definitely have an abundance and we'll be able to pay that forward, which is really nice. I don't know, that sounds like a challenge to me. I think I'm gonna plant all oh. these next season. <laughs> so those are bell pepper. These are habanero. So this is, these are, these are old habanero. I got those done the other day. But as you can see here, these ones, and I'm trying not to touch them, these ones that have the flesh on them, I just did those today. So what I did this morning is I got my spicy peppers ready to dehydrate. I wanted to dehydrate a bunch of spicy peppers to um, use you know, down the road for cooking or for chili powder. So I cut around, I cut all the flesh off the, the pepper and then I just left the inside and scooped that out and put it on the plate. Now these will dry. They should have no mold issues because they're open and exposed to the air. So these will go in my office, they'll dry up. So once they dry, I put them into, they're not really seed packets, they're little coin pouches. So I put all of our seeds, once they're dry, into these coin pouches. These are, I had it upside down. These are number one coin envelopes. There's different sizes. I like these. They're very economical. I got them off of Amazon. I think this whole box of 500 was maybe $10, maybe. Um, so they're very economical, very budget friendly. They hold a ton of seeds. These are a giant jalapeno. And as I clean off the plates with the dry seeds, I just put them into the pack that I already have going. Now some seeds we have a lot of, so I have several packs of those. So eventually I do want to get regular size seed packets um, and then maybe even get a rubber stamp made of our farm logo or they have some custom ones where then you could like write in what's in the packet. I would like to do that eventually, but that's not in the it's budget right now. Down it's down the road right now. We're just saving seeds for the farm and not really concerned about the aesthetics of it. Um, but eventually I would like to do that, especially if we're gonna sell seeds or gift seeds. Yeah. And it's always a good idea to collect your own seeds if you can. Like what happened last year, there was a shortage of workers and people and right. just overall seeds right. were hard to get a hold of for a little bit too. Yeah, they were hard to get a hold of. Delivery times were extended. The, a lot of the larger seed companies had only certain days of the week that non-commercial growers could order seeds. Um, so not only is it good for those reasons, but it's also just good for your wallet. It's, you know, more sustainable and environmentally friendly. You're not having to order and receive all that packaging. Um, and the other good thing is as you grow varieties and they do really well, so that's like one of the big keys is you want to save seeds from the plants that are doing really well over the seasons, your seeds, those seeds evolve to be disease resistant, um, cater to your climate. So those seeds will become your best producing plant. So that's yeah. why it's always really good. When we move to Tennessee, we're gonna start with seeds from Florida. It might take a little while for them to, yeah. to acclimate there. They might not do well, we'll see. We're gonna try it. They might do better. Yeah, they might. And then we'll save seeds from those and then over the years, our seeds from our farm will just get better and better. Okay, so that was peppers. Another super easy one to save from is okra. So we love okra. We have a few different varieties of okra. I actually have a seed packet here. You can see these dried seeds right here. 
These ones that look whitish on the plate, those are them when they're more fresh. Um, these ones are drying out right now. I did not decipher which varieties these were. Seed saving. She's really fail. good at that actually. <laughs> Some so, people are good at things and not so good at that. She's really good at that. Yeah. So these are a mix of burgundy okra and the new variety we got from Baker Creek. I have the seed packet in there somewhere. Um, so I just, I was in a pinch. I was cutting okra up for a snack. I pulled out the seeds from some of our really large pods. We had let some of our pods get a little too big. At that point, they get a little too woody. So all you do is you slice the okra open and you pull the seeds out. And it was really funny. I was telling Jose when I was doing it that it was it reminded me of like getting fish eggs out of a fish or something because yeah. of the way that they're situated in the okra. So this is another really easy one. You could put your okra pods, your really large okra pods outside or in a sunny window, let the whole pod dry and then pull the seeds out. I chose to cut the pod away. Again, we deal with a lot of moisture here and I didn't want them to mold. Yeah. Um, so my suggestion for the more humid climates is to cut them cut up. Them up get the seeds out of there and lay the seeds out to dry by themselves. So okra is another really, really simple one because you're doing it while the plant is still producing for you. You don't have to wait till the end of the plant's life cycle, mm -hmm. let it flower, let it sit there and take up space in the garden. Peppers, okra, tomatoes. Tomatoes is a really easy one as mm -hmm. well. Tomatoes is another one. You're pulling those fruits off, you're eating the fruit. And a lot of times people are scooping out the seeds. They don't use the seeds in their recipe. Mm -hmm. Now we do, yeah. but so we have to like intentionally set seeds aside from our tomatoes. Well, not too intentionally. If you're producing a lot of tomatoes, which we have. You have an aphid on you. Take it out, take it out. It's gonna eat oh me. Oh my gosh, where'd that aphid come from? I have no idea. Anyways, so tomatoes is really easy. Um, you don't really have to like be intentional. If you're producing a lot, you're gonna be losing tomatoes anyways to like birds, mm. just wildlife. That's a good point. Or they're just gonna go bad on you all of a sudden. You know, take those seeds, don't throw it away. Take yeah. those seeds before you put it in the compost or put it in the trash, whatever you decide to do with it. But it's an easy fruit to get seeds from. Right, now saving tomato seeds is a little bit different. Um, I have a bit of a process for those. I need to grab something. So saving tomato seeds, you can do a couple different ways. As with all of this, this is just how we do it and how I found it easier. What I like to do is cut the tomato open, pull out the flesh where the seeds are, and then I will either set them aside or if I have time to process them right then and there, I will put them in a strainer. One of these little wire mesh strainers, I have two sizes, doesn't matter which. I put the flesh with the seeds in here and then I run it under water and I mix the seeds around until all that flesh and like that ex exterior covering on the seeds kind of melts away. And then I just have the seeds left. Once I do that, you want to take them out of here. I usually knock them either onto a paper plate or what works actually better is wax paper or a paper towel. And then literally you will save that entire paper towel or you will save that wax, that section of wax paper. I did them directly on a paper plate and they stuck so badly. Yeah. I'm hoping that I didn't damage the seeds when I was trying to get the dried seeds off of the paper plate. So it's much better to put them right on a paper towel or a napkin or a piece of wax paper and then you literally when you're going to plant that you can either try and remove it from that wax paper or the paper towel or you can cut like rip that little section off with the seed and plant it with it and that little piece of paper towel is going to break down and not bother the seed but that's how you want to save tomato seeds they're just like they just have a few extra steps right and you don't need too many tomato seeds to get a good no. uh, garden going right because mm -hmm. all you need is really one two plants and you can just take the cuttings from them and you can make that two plants into like 20 the suckers yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then as long as you get a few tomatoes you take one of those tomatoes mm -hmm. save a few seeds and it the process just keeps yeah, going really easy yeah another really easy one is squash and you can do this from garden grown squash or you can do this from organic squash you get at the grocery store right here i have acorn squash seeds which i used to save in little plastic bags but we don't buy these anymore um, these are from an acorn squash at the store i've never grown an acorn squash from seed that i've purchased so these are what we've used they work they germinate Germination's not always as good from store-bought stuff, but they work. If you grow zucchini, crookneck, butternut, any of your squash varieties, 
you can intentionally let one get big, like for the zucchini, the crook neck, and then make sure that, so that they have the mature seeds in them. And then you use that for seeds um, and then make zucchini bread out of the rest of it or something. Right. The butternut, things of that variety, acorn squash, you're not eating the seeds anyway. Scoop those seeds out. You kind of want to do like you do with tomato because they have flesh on them. Get all the flesh off, put them on a paper plate to dry, and then pop those in a in a little seed bag when you're done, when they're dry. And uh, along those lines, cucumbers. Cucumbers, yep, that's a good one. I didn't even think mm -hmm. of that. Yeah, cucumbers are a really easy one. Didn't you one. do the Armenian cucumbers last time? You kept I some did. of those seeds, so yeah. we used those this time around, mm -hmm. didn't we? The trick with cucumbers is just like those zucchini and the crookneck squash, you have to make sure that they're big enough that they have mature seeds in them. Mm -hmm. So you, you want to let one or two get a little large. So this is where you get into like the easy ones and, and you start, you know, this is like some of the medium ones, quite right. a little bit harder to harvest seeds from because you got to pick them at the right stage or let them right. go a little bit further for you to be able to have good seeds for the next season. Right, like if you're pulling cucumbers for pickling, there's not really gonna be any significant seeds mm -hmm. in there for you to use. The larger pick, the larger, I almost said pickle varieties, the larger, what are they called, cucumbers? Cucumbers. <laughs> the larger cucumbers. What do the veggie boys call it? The family of cucumbers? Cu 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 cucurbits. Cucurbits. <laughs> Which is what they are. Yeah, well, I don't yeah. know why I can't say Cucurbits. Figure. You let the cucumbers get larger and then harvest the seeds. Yeah. Armenian cucumbers are great because they're supposed to be large and in charge and then you can right. harvest from those. And if you're in a, a hot climate like we are or you know a wet moist climate like we are, Armenian cucumbers are a wonderful variety to grow because yeah. they love the heat. And they're they, nice and sweet at, yeah. at, even when they're big. Even when they're big, they're Meaty. so, so good. Yeah. yeah, I love those. But saying cucumbers it made me think about the eggplant we have. Yeah. Well, we gotta wait for them to be a little bit bigger as well yes. to get good seeds from. Yeah. We have not saved seeds from eggplant yet. Nope. I actually, I thought about it when I was cooking eggplant last time, but we've also never had a very successful eggplant mm. um, harvest. So hopefully the ones that are out there, they'll be able to get larger and we can get seeds from them. But- This is actually the best season we've had with eggplants. The first season we did with it, you know, we tried to grow an eggplant was not so successful, no. although we did have a, a couple big ones over on your bed, but this season is kind of more. We're getting more of yeah, them. Yeah, we're getting more of them, but they're not getting too, mm -mm. they're not getting big. They're, no. they're staying pretty small. So we'll try again next year. We're excited to try those in Tennessee. That'll yeah. be really nice to see how well they do there. But eggplants are another one that you can save seeds from. The seeds are very visible once you open up the plant. The biggest thing is just to get those seeds out of the, the fleshy material and get them drying because again you don't want seeds to mold and then use moldy seeds that's right. something you want to avoid peppers tomatoes um those are easy uh cucumbers get a little bit harder eggplants get a little bit harder just because you got to pick them at the right stage beans um, are super easy yeah i have a plate of beans somewhere around there right. probably behind that basket i got them over here here, here are your beans <laughs> So I grow beans every summer. We grow beans at other times as well, but just different variety. Um, and I always save seeds. This right here is what I'm going to label my summer beans mix. And that's because all of these are actually um, cow pea varieties. And these are what we grow in the summer in the beds and spaces that we're kind of letting rest and that we're just letting rejuvenate over the summer because here in Florida, there's not a lot that we can grow through those hot summer months. But cow peas do really well. They're also nitrogen fixers, so they're adding nitrogen to our soil. So it's a double benefit. We get, well, actually it's a triple benefit. We get ground cover, we get seeds to save, we get food to eat. I guess that's four. Mm -hmm. Ground cover, seeds, food, and improvement in the soil. So we grow these um, right here. I've got uh, purple knuckle whole cow peas, pink eye purple whole cow peas, and black eye peas. Um, so this is a nice variety. I will use these again next year. Um, and we got, I mean, huge harvests off of them. Now you could do these one of two ways. You can take, sometimes you'll get dried pods out there. You missed them and they just dry up. You'll save those seeds. And then the second part is when I bring beans in, if I have a really developed one that developed really nicely, that's gonna be too far for us to eat because the pod is tough and fibrous now, and the beans would have to be cooked longer, 
I'll just save that one for seeds. So I'll take those out and put them on the plate and let those dry and save those for seeds. The other thing is that one developed really nicely. So you know that that's a good, a good yeah. seed in there. Yeah. So peas, beans, um, those are all really easy to save. Well, they're really easy to harvest, but yeah. I think you still have to wait for the correct stage in their life. Right, right yeah, you don't wanna, you can't take like a really underdeveloped no. pod with tiny little seeds. That's probably not gonna work out right. super well. For some of the ones that we have to wait a little bit longer, we yeah. got a couple of examples right here. We do. What do you got right over there? Okay, so over here, these, oh my gosh, there's little spider webs on them. <laughs> these have been sitting here drying for a long time. These ones are, are they echinacea, echinacea or Mexican sunflower? These are Mexican sunflower. This one's echinacea. That's why you should label. Stop. So Mexican sunflower, we have a huge plant back there. And this is a bunch of the blooms that it threw off yeah. last season. I pull them off and I've just been sitting here and letting them dry until I'm ready to process them. They look a lot like zinnia seeds when you get down to it. And you just have to deconstruct a spiky ball and then you end up with a tiny pointy little seed, just like a zinnia seed. Might be hard to see, but yeah. It's yeah. There. So they're, they're down in here and you have to like deconstruct this whole thing. So these take more processing. I usually get a glass of wine and sit at the table and Jose has the TV on and I process all of these and get all the yeah. seeds out. Um, I do have a, a huge pouch already saved of these seeds. And we know they're good because they uh, we have a few volunteers, volunteers out underneath our existing yes. Mexican sunflower. And then actually in the compost, we threw a bunch of these in the compost and guess mm -hmm. what we have? We have flowers. And that's a good point. I do test them. So I've done trials with the echinacea seeds I've saved. I haven't had great germination on those ones, but I think echinacea in general, I've had a challenging time with. I think people um, in general have had a yeah. problem here. In but they have sprouted and I've gotten, I've been able to grow plants, several echinacea plants from our own seeds. The Mexican sunflower seeds have done really well. Beans have done fine. Peppers do great. Mm -hmm. um, so don't be afraid. Don't feel like if you save your own seeds that you're going to have germination problems. Um, that's Maybe just not true. Down here. Yeah. So these, so the pointy part, yep, that's it. See how small that is. So that's an echinacea tell, it's right there. So the echinacea are going to be really spiky and you have to deconstruct the whole thing. And I don't know if they're going to be able to see it down in here. The white part is actually the seed and you don't need a lot. Like you can see, I'm going to get quite a bit of seeds off of saving one blossom that dried. Mm -hmm. Now with flowers, I let them dry for the most part on the plant. Um, you, cause you need that flower to fully mature and start to die off before those seeds have developed. You can't pick like a, a bloomed flower and get seeds from it. So you need to make sure it's bloomed, it's dying and it's dried off. And the tip is that you wait until the stem below it is brown and has started to dry and then you take that. And that's when I took all my Mexican sunflowers and that's when I did my echinacea as well. And then you got another flower over here. Oh my gosh, yes. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get this in the camera. <laughs> Hold on, watch your face. Okay. Yeah. So we'll just show the ginormity of this and then I will show them a smaller version. So I just wanted you guys to see that so you can see like the space that it takes up. These are marigolds. Now, Jose has asked me several times why I have those marigolds that you just saw. I have even more bushes of marigolds dried in the garage and I save as many seeds as possible. I have a huge bowl here. These are what the pods look like. These are unprocessed. And then I have probably 10 little coin packets of marigold seeds saved. Yeah, um, that I gift when people order stuff from our store, like ourselves and balms, because they're so abundant. I'll be able to literally go around our farm and in areas where we want ground cover and we want flowers, so there's so that we don't get weeds there. I can sprinkle seeds, and that's what I've been doing out front here. And we'll need them for pollinators too. Yes. Very easy plant to grow. They just pop up like yep. popcorn. So a lot of times, what I would do throughout the season is I would go and I would harvest these dried heads from the plants while the plants were still growing. And then at the end of the season, I pull the dying plant out, put them in the garage and just let them dry. To harvest marigold seeds, you take the little pod here, you pull off the little tuft at the top and then you peel it open And oh my gosh, I hope I can show this. All of those. It's gonna be hard to see. 
Everything that's in there, those are all seeds. Let me see. Every single thing right here and is a seed. And you probably have about 20 in there that I can count. Like just Yeah, so. Rough. Everything there, all these little things that are falling out, those are marigold seeds. If you've ever bought a pack of marigold seeds, that's exactly what they look like. So it's very easy to get a large amount of seeds. They I look mean, like little spears. I mean, I'm going to have a ton of seeds. <laughs> So that's kind of why I've been talking about investing in like some seed packets in that stamp and either gifting seeds or selling seeds because yeah. there's some that we have a lot of. So those are fairly easy. They just take time to dry and you yeah. need, you just need a dedicated space to set them aside. And then you need to get yourself a nice beverage yeah. and sit at the table and spend, <laughs> spend a few, spend a few hours processing. Yeah. But you know, they just take time because again, like Nicole was saying, you need to wait till they dry out before you pick them and try to get any seeds from them. If you do them too early, then it's not going to be worth the time, right? Yeah. Now with marigolds, once they start to die back and that pod is closed, you'll be able to tell. You can harvest them and then let them dry at that point. Yeah. And let's get into one that is going to be hard because this takes a lot of time. And a lot of space. And a lot of space, yes. So one of the hardest things to grow because it just takes a long time is broccoli. Yep, right. I would say any of the brassicas, any of the brassicas. even getting into things like radishes, we've never saved carrot seeds. <laughs> um, you have to let those things flower in order to get seeds from them. I mean, just to get a broccoli head, it takes a super long time. Right, and then think of about how long you have to wait after that broccoli heads and you harvest it for the rest of that plant to flower and then for that plant to dry and die back mm -hmm. to get seeds. This is what both kale and broccoli pods look like. Kale, um, kale are actually a lot smaller, like thinner. They're not as full. The seeds are a lot tinier. But your broccoli plant, your kale plant, they will flower. They will get really big and crazy, and they will have all of these pods, which you can eat. We've eaten radish pods. We eat broccoli flowers. Um, but it just took a really long time for them to get to this point. And then all you do is you take that dried pod, you open it up and there's like a thin layer in the middle that separates both sides of the pod and that's where the seeds are yeah, and it's very hard to got see one there. Yeah. yeah they're hard to see they're pretty small but yeah so you see there's a thin film and then you peel that film and you try not to drop all the seeds i usually do this over a bowl and then i get all the seeds and in, into an area but they are teeny tiny and I just lost my seed. Hold on, I got I it. I got it. Here. Saved you. I know. I have like three right here. So you can see you have to be real careful. So do these over a plate or a bowl. Yeah, they roll pretty. And then you you, lo you lose everything. You just worked all those months to, to save. The hardest part about that is, like I said, leaving it in the garden, giving it the space and the time that it needs. And for us, especially, it was challenging because we don't have a lot of growing space. So leaving that there prevented us from planting something else that we could have been eating. But we let one go. We let some kale plants go. And now we have a really nice abundance of seeds. I mean, I think this is all we're going to need for next season, yeah. to be honest. I mean, I just did this one pot and I got 12 to 15 seeds out of it. Mm -hmm. Let me get that out. Yeah, so you can see on this this little section of plant that I say, this isn't even the whole broccoli plant. This is just a little section. There are probably, oh gosh, probably a hundred pods or more. And if you get 12 seeds out of every pod or even 10, and you have a hundred pods on here, it's a lot of seeds. So you can see how economical this is to do. And even if you don't have the space to save broccoli seeds or brassica seeds, but you can save your pepper seeds, you can save your tomato seeds, your squash, that saves you from having to buy those. So then you can better afford to buy the seeds for the plants you weren't able to save seeds for. So all the brassicas kind of fall into this category. It's not complicated. It's just time consuming and you need the space to dedicate to those. Right. Oh, we forgot to talk about- Oh, this is actually the bonus we have for here. Lufa! Yeah, so here My is- My Lufa Lufa. Because- <laughs> One of them. I have, I counted today. I have 15 more loofah out there on the plant growing, and I have one more inside that's drying. So we got 17 loofah off it. That's one plant, right? And this is not her first loofah yet. No. One plant. Not her first loofah. This is the second one, but I think we let it dry a little bit better than the first one. And the first the one was very small. Yeah. Um, so how, how can you tell 
the loofah is ready for harvesting. One of the best ways to know is when you start yeah. hearing that little seeds shake around in there, and it yeah. also means it's dry. I think that's ready to like open up. Yeah, you can, you can feel, you can hear, it's crispy, it's crunchy. This one's ready to harvest. Now, um, Jose did mention earlier today that he's gonna be taking that loofah down soon. I have a lot of green loofahs on there. Once he cuts that, they're not gonna get any bigger, but they're still usable. I will bring them inside and I will put them somewhere to dry. Even if you harvest them fully green, they will dry and become a loofah sponge. Yeah. So do not think that because they're green and you cut your plant or you have to take down, they have to get rid of them. They just have to be big enough and they're all about this size bigger. Yeah. So. Um, so to bust it out. yeah, so to harvest the seeds out of these, try not to make a mess. You just want to crack it. Oh, I made a mess. It's okay. You just crack it open. Get the beginning of that. I just feel like you're gonna elbow me. Now I'm just trying to keep it up in the camera view, so you can see that just peels right off and actually some of the seeds are right on top so this is a loofah seed here's another one they look like watermelon seeds this one actually has some mold in it it does but i can clean it off see that's one of the challenges here in florida this one dried a lot outside and uh this comes out whole. i'll clean the sponge off the other ones they'll be drying inside oh my gosh <laughs> Okay, so the seeds are just falling out of here now. The seeds are all inside. You can see the black seeds there. Man, once we clean this out, there are so many seeds in there. So even just now, it's not even, it's not even halfway cleaned out. Those are all the seeds that I've gotten so far, just out of this one loofah. I mean, you only need to harvest seeds from one loofah for you to have enough loofah plants for the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah, because when I mean, if you get one of these to grow, it'll go crazy all over your garden. One of the mm -hmm. reasons I'm not really fond of loofah, Nicole knows this, is they just they bind everywhere. Just one plant will get. I mean, will be in, if you let it go, it can get around your whole backyard, yeah. around the whole fence. It's just. It's yeah, crazy. I mean, if you've seen our other videos, ours is growing up over the arch trellis, all along the ground, up on the fence, and vining down the fence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So loofah is an easy one to harvest, to grow really, once you get it going. I literally haven't fed that thing. I haven't paid any attention to it. It just does what it wants, it takes care of itself. And now I have a ton of seeds, again, to share, to replant. Um, and then we're gonna have a bunch of sponges, which yeah. is gonna be really nice. Super easy to grow. Yeah. I mean, just plant it. You can eat loofah when they're very young and small. I did cut one off and I tried it. I did not like the aftertaste. I, I would just rather grow them out for the sponges. No, thank you. Yeah. I'm not doing it. <laughs> is there anything that we haven't really touched on? Any herbs? An easy herb to save seeds from is going to be cilantro. Mm -hmm. Cilantro bolts here. So once it bolts, if you leave it in and let it flower, you'll get those seed pods. Dill, I've saved a ton of dill seeds. You let the dill flower, you let the flower heads dry. I let mine dry right on the plant outside. You pull those off, you get all the little seeds off, you save those. I'm sure there's stuff that we're forgetting, but the concept is all really the same. You just need to let the plant mature. You need to harvest the seeds out of the flesh, let them dry, and then package them up. The easiest stuff, again, is the stuff that you can be eating and harvesting and save the seeds from while you're also eating and harvesting it. Right. The more complicated stuff is the stuff that just takes time because you have to leave it in the garden. It's at the end of its life. You're no longer eating from it, and you gotta just let it let it sit there and wait and, and get the seeds developed and dry. Right. All right, guys. Well, it is Saturday. Um, we hope you guys have a wonderful Labor Day holiday weekend. It's Labor Day, right? That's right. Monday. Holiday. Labor yeah. Day. Okay, Monday. perfect. <laughs> All I know is I have the day off. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, enjoy your weekend. Yes, yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and get this all cleaned up. We hope you guys really enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one. Okay, so last thing, right? Yes, yeah, so we forgot that we're supposed to announce the winners of the Pink Pineapple giveaway. Um, now we only ran the contest on YouTube and we really appreciate you guys that participated. That's been awesome. We've also had some local um, gardening friends come by and purchase some, which has been really nice. Yeah. So we appreciate that as well. All right, so we're gonna use the Wheel of Names 
to pick the winners. So we're giving yeah. away four. Yeah. So so we're picking four winners, right? Yes. Each one gets one. You don't need two pineapple plants to pollinate the other. One yeah. pineapple plant will grow a bloom and grow your pineapple. It takes about two years, but it will. Yeah. Anyways, we got everybody in, in yeah. here. Yeah. So let's spin it. Let's just tap. <laughs> let's see who the first winner is. It's Bojan. Bojan. So Bojan, you won one of the pink pineapples. So send us an email. Our email is below in the description and we'll coordinate getting you that pineapple. All right. Now spin again. Here we go. And all right, I like doing that. <laughs> oh, Arthur. Arthur is the next winner. Arthur, send us an email. Let's see who's gonna win. It's like playing slots or something. <laughs> I know, right? Amanda <laughs> from Beachside Urban Farmer, you won. We've got one more left to give away. Here we go. Last one. Yay, Suzanne! Suzanne Weary, you are so wonderful. You always leave comments. I'm so glad. All right, guys. That's all of them. That's the four. What, you want to give another one away? I like this. Let's give one more away. <laughs> I knew it. Okay, let me hit it. So we're giving a bonus one away just because this one. is so fun. Yay! So it's Robin. There's two Robins on here. So this is Robin Schultz. Yep. 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 So Robin, you won as well. So everybody, please send us an email. Our email address is below, but it is heavenlyacresfarmtn for Tennessee at gmail.com. And again, that'll be below. I'll put it on the screen too. Send us an email and we'll coordinate getting you your pink pineapple plant. Yeah, congratulations to everybody Yay! that won. All right, guys, we're done for real. Yeah, this time's for real. <laughs> Bye.